begin, though, with the assassination of Haiti's president. It would be a shattering development to any country at any time. But Haiti, as you know, and as we've reported extensively on this program, has had more than its share of misfortune, whether from poverty, natural disaster, or now political violence. And it seems intrigue. We have footage purporting to be from the moment surrounding the killing. CNN cannot independently confirm its authenticity. You'll not see any images on the clips that uh, we're about to play you. The frame is black. What you'll hear is certainly raising questions. We've edited the same passage together several times with someone claiming to be from the American DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, so you can hear more clearly what's being said. So again, we repeated that so you could hear it more clearly. Again, we cannot independently authenticate this, and the DEA today denied any involvement. That said, whatever the clip actually is, it does seem to be part of the picture, or to be more precise, part of the puzzle of what happened in Haiti last night. More now from CNN's Melissa Bell. By the time security forces responded in the early hours of Wednesday morning, it was too late. Haitian President Jovenel Moïse was dead, assassinated in his private residence. His wife, the First Lady of Haiti, gravely wounded, medevaced to the U.S. for potential life-saving treatment. As daylight dawned on the aftermath of bullet holes and spent shell casings, the scope of the brazen attack more clear. The information we have is that the attackers were a group of English and Spanish-speaking persons. They were carrying huge caliber weapons and killed the president. This audio, circulating on social media, purported to be of the time of the assassination. CNN cannot confirm the authenticity of the video. Men shouting in English, claiming they are U.S. drug enforcement agents, providing clues of how the attackers may have been able to penetrate the security perimeter surrounding the presidential residence seemingly with ease. The Haitian ambassador to the U.S. saying at a news conference Wednesday, those responsible are believed to be highly trained mercenaries posing as U.S. agents. You said they identified themselves as DEA? Yeah, that's why, that's why they presented, that's how they presented themselves as DEA agents, like they are here for an operation, DEA operation. Do you believe they were actually DEA? No, we, uh, there is no way. There is no way DEA would have come in the country like this. We would have been informed, and, and everything DEA does uh, always do it with the U.S. Embassy at port -France. The U.S. State Department also dismissing as preposterous that those responsible could be DEA agents. These reports are absolutely false. Uh, the United States condemns uh, this heinous act. Uh, these false reports are nothing more than that, just false reports. The Haitian government says a manhunt is now underway for those responsible. The rest of state's acting prime minister, who has assumed leadership of the country, trying to assure a stunned population, as well as world leaders, that the government of Haiti is still functioning, declaring a state of siege, which allows for the closing of national borders and temporarily invokes martial law. We want to assure you that we will bring the killers of the president to justice. Please stay calm and let the authorities do their work. We don't want the country to plunge into chaos. This is a very sad day for our nation and for our people. In life, Haitian President Jovenel Moïse was a polarizing figure, with many protesting his rule and demanding he resign. He presided over a country on the precipice of chaos. The question now, will his death push the nation past its breaking point? Melissa Bell, CNN. And joining us now from Haiti is a freelance journalist, Harold Isaac. So Harold, what is it first like in Haiti tonight? Um, what's the scene like? Well, Anderson, we were talking about empty streets. Uh, businesses are closed. They've been closed all day. 
uh, there's still a massive sense of, of shock uh, after what happened uh, in the early hours of today. Um, and we're, you have a nation trying to reel with that new reality. What was the security like at the president's house? He was, uh, according to reports, assassinated around 1.30 in the morning today. Can you just talk about what that compound is, is like and, and how difficult it would have been to get in? Well, I understand, as we've been to, to, to Haiti in the past, um, since 2010, actually, the National Palace has been destroyed and has not been rebuilt. So uh, presidents um, have taken a habit of not actually living in the National Palace where they would have normally been. So the house of uh, uh, Jovenel Moise was his private residence uh, that was heavily secured, heavily protected. And that makes the surprise even more stunning to the whole uh, country uh, that such a thing would, would happen uh, in, in such a secure location. The, the idea that they were yelling out DEA, claiming that they were part of the DEA, in a country like Haiti, that's actually probably a pretty effective thing for them to have done, isn't it? I mean, obviously, the U.S. has enormous power in Haiti. Uh, in some other countries around the world, if somebody yelled out DEA operation, it may not have any impact. But in Haiti, people would probably listen to that, wouldn't they? Well, um... This was shocking, and it was a big sense of awe, especially at the time it happened. Um, and for these uh, individuals who looked very organized, very structured, very professional, at least from the, the videos that are going online, uh, could carry that, that, that sentiment and could be impressive. However, um, you also have uh, the security unit of the president of the republic, which is one of the highest uh, trained elite uh, corps in the police uh, that have been trained in the U.S. and elsewhere uh, that are the best paid and they're trained and they, they know their drill, um, it, it's highly uh, questionable that they would kind of fall for a trap like that. Hmm. And uh, obviously the airport was shut down, as far as I understand, as well as the border with the Dominican Republic. Uh, so whoever did this most likely, I assume, would still be in the country. Are you hearing anything about what authorities are doing to try to track them down? Well, the prime minister said it in his uh, presser and, and, and also in um, the steps he's been announcing and, and the, uh, the, the decrees uh, that the investigation is, is ongoing and they're trying to find the perpetrators. Um, but it's unclear, actually. It's a, the situation is still very unclear, and that's part of the reason why everybody's hunkering down uh, because we don't know uh, what's, what's to, what to expect from this new reality and what, what's dawning on, on, on the country. And the acting prime minister has declared a state of siege in Haiti. Are you clear on what that actually means? Well, I understand a lot of people have been asking actually about what that actually means. It, it's, it's unprecedented uh, in, in our recent history that uh, such a measure has been taken. But for, um, I guess, the American public, uh, the way I, I, I could explain it, it's, it's, it's akin of martial law. And uh, that means uh, all uh, public liberties are suspended. Um, virtually anyone can get arrested for any reason. Uh, and uh, house can be searched without warrants. So this is the kind of measures we're looking at in the coming hours or days uh, in, in order to respond to, to, to this event. Harold Isaac, I appreciate the reporting. Thank you very much.